In the movie Matilda, Matilda loved the public library and all the wonderful books that she discovered there. But did you know that the film itself is based upon a popular children's book? The way I got to make Matilda, this is really fun. I was reading every night to my kids. That's what I do. I read to my kids at night when they go to bed. We always read to our kids at night. Not anymore, because they're kind of grown up now, and they read to themselves. One night, one of my girls brings this book in. She said she, there was this book, Matilda, and she would really like to hear it. So I said, well, OK, let's start it. And we started reading Matilda. And every night, we would read another chapter of Matilda. Or sometimes two or three, because they were so fun that we couldn't stop. I just loved it. And I said, Taria, we should make this into a movie. So books inspire people to do amazing things. And where's the best place to find them? At the library. Let's go visit a real one. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Marjorie Hopper, the children's librarian here at the Public Library. Do any of you have a special kind of book that you would like to find in the library? I like Jackie Robinson. And the famous baseball player? Okay. Yes, we have books about Jackie Robinson, not only in the sports section where you can find about his records, but you can read about his life from the biography section. I would like to learn about, like, how to draw. Do you want to learn how to draw animals or people? I want to draw animals. We do have books on drawing animals, step by step, from circle to squares, and you can have a beautiful picture by the end of the book. And once you're inside, an entire world of knowledge and fun is open to you. Knowledge is power, and that's where you get it. You really learn about the entire world without even leaving the library. Like sometimes you can't maybe go to Africa, but you can read a book about Africa, and there it is. Oh, that looks like a galleon. Do you have any books on witches? Witches have also been called entrenchesses, or even weird sisters. Are you a weird sister? <laughs> you can meet people you've never been able to meet through books. I was uh, wondering if I can uh, look at baseball books. The ball? weighs between 5 and 5.5 ounces. Top quality balls are covered in cowhide or horsehide treated with alum and were hand stitched. Isn't that cool? And libraries don't just have books. They also have videos and DVDs, even comic books. They also have computers, which you can use for free. And now that we have the internet, you can read on the internet. And there's always places to go, really good sites to go to to find books. Libraries have wonderful events, like puppet shows and read-alouds with very special guests. And sometimes it's fun if somebody reads to you, and it's sometimes it's fun if you read to somebody. Today, Lucy Dahl has come to read from her father Roald Dahl's book, Matilda. Ready? Every afternoon, as soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down to the library. The walk took only 10 minutes, and this allowed her two glorious hours sitting quietly by herself in a cozy corner, devouring one book after another. The books transported her into new worlds and introduced her to amazing people who lived exciting lives. She went on olden day sailing ships with Joseph Conrad. She went to Africa with Ernest Hemingway and to India with Rudyard Kipling. She traveled all over the world while sitting in her little room in an English village. I even heard about a kid the other day who liked to read to her dog. And her dog loved to hear her read. So she would read to her dog. And I bet if you had a dog or a cat or a bird or a hamster or a turtle or a snake or any kind of a pet or even, you know, a, a stuffed animal, they would love to hear you read. And you can try that sometime. And whether you're reading to your stuffed toy or your sister, you can find any kind of book at your local library. And you can get your own library card to take it home for free. It's really nice to hold that book in your hand or borrow it from the library and bring it back. 
The library is full of adventures. I can choose any book I want to. Great fun. I can go to different worlds in the library. Always read, because reading is the best. I hope you all get lots of books and read every day. Because those words are really important to you. And they always will be. And they'll always be your friends. Movies are illusion. It's all magic. It's like like a magician. You don't want to know how the mag magician does the trick while you're watching it. I mean, it's okay now to know, because it's already, you've seen it, maybe. Have you seen the movie? Well, if you haven't seen the movie, you better stop this and go see the movie, and then come on back to the this stuff, and then we'll tell you all about how it's done. We get to the restaurant, and my wife, Rhea Perlman, my real wife, plays Mrs. Wormwood, is telling me, take your hat off, Harry. Harry, take your hat off. I can't. This is a nice place. You can't wear a hat inside. His hat won't come off. And I, what's the matter with your hat? And so like, I try to pull the hat off of his head. I can't get it off. I can't get it off. Oh. <sighs> Just a minute. I'm gonna get this pull hat it, off. It, I'm pulling it. What we did was we had this harness on me, and I had these two wires going up into the hat. So they were like, I was holding it down with my body, and Rhea was pulling, trying to get it off my head. Until finally, it's time to rip the rim off, which is already ready to be ripped off, because that's how you do it. And then you go, ah! 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 And That's when the stunt people take over, because I can't really do backflips on tables. And I fall into the, the dessert tray, and the desserts go flying through the air. Ah! Ah! The flying food was the most fun to do, I think because we literally got to put food on these little catapults, you know? <laughs> you know, we put a fulcrum down here and you put like a, you know, a teeter-totter. And we put a, a, a cream tart on there and just go, blah! <laughs> sometimes it would whack against the ceiling. We had to do it again. You know, sometimes we would hit the cameraman. You know, it was just like trying, hit and miss. And of course, Matilda's lands right in front of her with a fork in it. She got to eat a lot of that cream pie. Yeah. I could go for some pie myself right now. Kids are always very excited to see TVs blow up or anything blow up. I mean, don't you like to watch things blow up? That's really fun. We had the camera there. We had a big plexiglass shield so that we shot through the plexiglass so that we could protect the camera operator. And then we had the isolated television. And the special effects guys who know what they're doing, they had their wires running off, you know. <laughs> and the camera's moving in on it. <laughs> Zooming in on it, closer and closer and closer. <laughs> and it got to a certain point and I was watching the monitor, and I give a signal, and Pwah! It was so great. I was screaming my head off, right? I was screaming my head off in that scene, because, I mean, it was really crazy. I kept asking if we could blow up another one, and Mara, she wanted to blow up like a million of them. She just wanted to blow up TVs every day after that. Hey, you know, you kids, we blew up this television, because it was very safe the way we did it, and you would not want to blow up your TV or even try to blow up your TV, because anyways, if you did that, you wouldn't have a TV to watch, and then what would you do? You couldn't even watch this DVD. We had a crane, a very, very big crane that went up and and came down and we put her in a harness. Hi, that's much right. better. There you, there you go. go. Okay. Okay, how's that feel? Yeah. Here, stretch your legs out really Jacqueline loved being in a harness. She was like, but the thing about Jacqueline that I remember really well is that she read. 
constantly. She read as much as Matilda. She read a lot of books. That looks sensational. You okay, Jacqueline? That looks sensational. The only difference is, guys, that is she'll be holding on to pigtails next time. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Wow. Okay. Okay. It's okay. If I start to get dizzy, you know what the code word is? What? Jelly beans. Are you going to shout down jelly beans? That's when she wants us to stop. Yeah. Yes. Action! There we go. Don't smile. It's horrifying. Ah! Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow, here we go. <laughs> we had special braids made, right? So that we could swing her around in a wide shot. We like popped out and we'd had to glue them back on. Everybody's horrified. <laughs> Was she good or what? You are flying, kiddo. You are flying. <laughs> I can't believe her laugh. No jelly beans. No jelly beans. She knows she knows jelly beans. No jelly beans. I think my biggest challenge on Matilda was making Pamela Ferris, who is a lovely woman, look like the mean trunch bull. We took a face cast of her and um, made some pieces for her out of gelatin. We made her a nose tip. And we also made her eye bags, so it made her look a little older and more tired. Got in there. And give a real cruel look. I can't scrunch my eyes up because they're still wet at the moment, so I have to stay fairly. But once they're dry and in place, you can, they're just like skin. I'm not aware of this at all. This is amazing. Use the rod, beat the child. That's my motto. The next step uh, we did to Pam was I started coloring in um, all of her like little imperfections on her face, like freckles. I put a lot of broken blood vessels. Like sometimes you'll see somebody has like a little vein on her face. Well, I drew in hundreds of those. And then I took kind of a coloring wand, like a mascara wand, and I colored in all the peach fuzz on her face which gave her a little bit of a mustache and a little bit of a beard, and I darkened her eyebrows. Wow. There she goes. It's like a cornfield after a storm, isn't it? We painted the teeth with kind of like a tobacco stain kind of a color um, that just kind of gave them a little bit of a yellowy edge to them. Pamela was really great about us letting us do whatever we wanted to do to her to really get her into that trench bull character look. It's delicious. When you see the end result, it's so uh, detailed and believable that I can look in the mirror and I believe it. Confess. When Pam came into the trailer in the morning, she was just Pam Ferris, and when she left, she was a trench bull, and I help her achieve that. It was really, really a fun scene to do. He ate a lot of cake. We made big, huge, wonderful cakes. Mm. They must have filmed that for two weeks. I remember, oh, whenever, when the rest of us would go home, the children in the classroom stuff, we'd go home, Pam and Bruce would come back and they would film that cake scene. Mm. Mm. I saw that little boy pass me sometimes looking terribly green about the gills and I thought, what's wrong with him? And I didn't realize he'd been out there eating piece after piece of cake. No, she didn't his light. No. Yeah, I was, wasn't I? Okay, not anymore. Okay. Wait, go out, Pam, room. back out. Let him spit, wait. I'm sorry, cut, cut. This is really gross, okay? I'm gonna tell you anyway. What we, used to, what we did with Bruce Bogtrotter is we made him stuff his face, but then I would cut the camera. Okay, cut, let him spit. Cut. 
Don't wipe his mouth, Going though. Right away. He would spit it out because if he would have eaten all that cake, he would have, he really exploded. I'm telling you, it was so big. It was so much cake. And the cake was good, too. I had a lot of it. Mm -mm. It was really, really uh, a fun scene to do. If you have something that is bothering you about, you're, you're shy about something, sometimes it's best to go right after that thing. You know, just go look it straight in the face and say, I'm embarrassed to do this, so, you know, and Mara did. She came up to me and said, you know, I really am embarrassed about uh, dancing in front of all these people. And I said, well, you know why? That's because they're not dancing. You're the only one dancing. She said, yeah. So I said, OK, here we go. And I put the music on. And we all danced. Everybody danced. The craft service people, the boom guy, the, the special effects man, the, the cinematographer. The only person who couldn't dance was the guy with holding the camera because he would have, we would have had this. So he just moved his feet like that, you know. Most of those things, with the cards flying out and dancing around, we did with, in the computer, computer generated image, which is called CGI. Everybody danced. That's a really good way to get over things with you and your friends. If there's something that's bothering you, see if you can get everybody to do it, you know? <laughs> You can't wait around for the wind to blow. You're making movies. Making movies. You can't wait around. You got to hurry up. Everybody wants the movie yesterday. The scene when, when Matilda goes to the house at night and causes all the crazy things to happen that frighten the Trunchbull, um, that was actually filmed on a soundstage at Sony in a perfect replica of the house that was built inside. I had massive wind machines, big, uh, fun machines that they used on, you know, big movies, on pirate movies and on the perfect storm where there's big wind outside and I put these things on and had the actors walk through them there's always a trick there's always some kind of like when Matilda makes the 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 uh, Miss Honey, the first time she shows Miss Honey her powers, she's able to make that pitcher rise. There was a pitcher, this great silver pitcher, but it had a pole attached to the bottom, and the pole went through a hole in the desk. So here's the pitcher, and there's some chap sitting under there, and we, they sort of go, OK, well, then the pitcher goes up, and someone's sending a signal to someone across the room, and then the pitcher, the guy raises it up on a thing, and then I push it down. <laughs> like this. But then, later on, in post-production, we erased the pole. Well, you know what was really fun to do was the chalk. Oh my, this was so much fun. The chalk. The chalk. The chalk. The method that really worked the best. Inside this piece of chalk, was a magnet, a really strong magnet. And on the other side of the blackboard was a guy who was writing backwards. So you could move the magnet on the back of the chalkboard, and it would make the chalk move around on the front. Somebody had to be behind the blackboard writing backwards, but we made it easier because we wrote all the letters on the back of the blackboard backwards so he could see what he had to do. So when the erasers are hitting the trunch bowl, they're actually on sticks, and there are a couple guys off stage beating her with these erasers on sticks. <laughs> and all the kids were going crazy. There was chalk dust flying everywhere. Everybody was screaming. And even though it looked like the trench pole was getting hurt, in fact, it was all, everybody was just really laughing because she was having a great time and the erasers were soft, so. 
It all ended well. No trench bowls were hurt in the making of the movie. Mara and I are sitting in our pajamas in our perfect life, and she uses her magic to pull a book off the bookshelf. How we did that was I had a guy on a skateboard laying on his back. There was somebody lying with sort of a fishing pole or something. And on the pole was the book. And he laid on his back, and somebody dragged him with a rope right across the room. And she grabbed the book. And when she grabbed the book, it came off of the pole. You're the actor, so we have to look at the book, and we have to look at each other, and pretend you're not seeing a six-foot-four chap lie on the floor. Mara was so good at never getting phased, really, by all the pandemonium going around, she would look at the book, and it would be about the book as if the book just flew into our hand miraculously, and there were no special effects that did it. OK, I'm recording. Uh, no, but I don't see anything. You got a lens cap on. What is that? Okay. Is that a camera? Yeah. Okay, and we're rolling. We are? Yeah. Oh, well, good. What are you doing with the camera? I don't know. It's playing, huh? No, I was, no I'm not. No, they're making, making a movie. It's like a documentary or something. I don't know. <laughs> this is where we're filming. This is supposed to be the Trench Bowl's garden, I think. And that's the Trunchbull's house. That's Miss Trunchbull's car. Wormwood Motors. Mr. Wormwood is supposed to be my dad. There's a camera. Lights. That's some big truck. I don't know what it is. There's lots and lots of people. And you don't make up what you want. You just, you don't make up what you want to say, you. Um, they, they give you things to say. <laughs> She barked at him. <laughs> Did you see that? This is Danny DeVito. He's he's a good director. He's not mean in real life. He's nice in real life. He's funny too. What's going on, Mara? And this is Ria. Hi. His way. You might wonder what I'm doing. I was going to go make a phone call, which is what I do mostly. Okay. I hang around on the set and I talk to people and try to make them feel like having a good time and okay. then I go make phone calls. That's what a producer does. This is Francois. Bonjour, comment ça va? Tu veux what, what was he saying? I don't know. You have to ask him. He's speaking French. This is my teacher, Richard. This is, what's your name? My name's Jeremiah. Jeremiah. This is I'm Jeremiah. Yeah. Yeah. We're having a great time. We're out here in Altadena. And it's yeah. a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And we're at the uh, Awful trench pool house. You go to your trailer or your dressing room. A trailer is like a motor home or an RV or something. It's like a house on wheels. Here we are outside my trailer. This is Shannon, my um, my photo double. Hi. Here's the little hopscotch thing that we made outside my trailer. Okay, I'm re we're ready to start. We're, it's recording. Start. Start. You can go back to your trailer sometimes and and get some rest or or eat something or or go back to your dressing room and play games or something and or school or school. You could do school too. And uh, here we are inside the trailer. It's like pretty messy and stuff. Right. Here's all the stuff that we've been eating. Anybody want a strawberry? How and this is you? Gary. Did you have a message, Gary? Yes, I did. And this is how we come to the trailer every day to get Mark. <laughs> Gary! Gary, you really had you know. Hi, Mara. How are you? Good. I'm Are you okay today? Okay. Listen, Lucia and Ed are over in the uh, makeup trailer, and they would like to have you to come in <laughs> to, to have your touch-ups, if that's okay. And this is There's the makeup the trailer, and look who's here. And this is Embeth. She plays Matani. Miss Jasmine. 
Well, we have like special flower names. They go into hair and makeup, where they put makeup on you to make you to make you look how they think the main character, the character would look. I think you need some makeup. Let me see your cheeks. Oh, let me see. Oh. Okay, I think you can go on now. You can go on. Okay. If you came with plain, straight hair, they might want to make your hair look curly or something. Can you redo this bow? What do you think of that idea? Okay. Uh, Shannon, where are you? Right here. Oh, there's Shannon. She's up there in the chair. Here's, there's Lucia. Brushing my hair. Here's the famous red ribbon. Ooh, the Dutch tilt. A Dutch angle. Whoa, another Dutch angle. Well, maybe I'll turn the whole thing upside down. Okay, so here we go. We're going to the Twinch Bulls house. Ooh, we're going on the for a ride on the car. Jack Rabbit start. Okay, the big Everybody hold on. Yay. As you can see, we're here on the stage. It's really dirty, so like, watch your step. Right this way, please? Yeah, you see here, we go this way. <laughs> to the set. If you just think you, you sit in a chair and you make up whatever you want to say, and there's like a video camera on you, and and a person that, that does a sound, and there's a person that says, lights, camera, action. You're wrong, that's not, that's not what they do. It's not really a video camera, it's a different kind of camera. And they don't say, lights, camera, action anymore. They say, rolling, rolling, rolling. Speed. Six. Marker. Action. I like being called just like an actress. This only stars are in the sky. Here we are, we're talking about Matilda. One of my favorite movies was so I had such a great time making a movie. See, I even have some props from the movie. This was the, the glue pot that stuck my hat on in the movie. It's great. We just remastered it for Blu-ray. And we're just about to do a tea party right now with the Trunchbull, Pam Ferris, Mara Wilson, Rhea Perlman, all the people that the, the kids grown up. Well, wait a minute. I'm the same. Rhea's the same. A little bit older. Pam is the same. It's totally different. It's like wacky. I showed them the movie. I showed them the movie. It was like just, I, I was emotional going up and, and saying hello to them because it's like, they were all like grown up and beautiful at 25 and 6. And you're going to have a great time. Stick around for the party. Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you got yeah, the dregs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got the dregs. I got the dregs. I won! I hit the double bingo! <laughs> Where, Harry? Right down here. <laughs> right down there. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Right, and one more. Right there, uh -huh. They're all mistakes, children. Filthy, nasty things. Glad I never was one. You should have won it today. <laughs> I ha where? <laughs> hey, dip face. Have a carrot. I was the brother. I don't see the brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Michael. Oh. Thanks for not telling. Best friends don't tell. Baby, 
All right. <laughs> okay, first things first, we come over here. Miss Honey taught us how to spell a long word yesterday. We can spell difficulty. You don't have pigtails anymore, no. which we found out. <laughs> Traumatized, never again. Never again, not after that. I don't want any, thank you. <laughs> Sign your real name, not Bruce Bobtrot. <laughs> okay, listen up, everybody. We have a new student with us today. This is Matilda Wormwood. Oh, my oh. God. You look exactly <laughs> <laughs> So do you. I remember the first time we heard about Matilda, about the book. Right. And I think it was our kids were just graduating into, like, reading pic uh, chapter, chapter books. Chapter books, right. Right? Before we started making the movie, before we even got anywhere, I would tell people <laughs> that it's something that I wanted to do. Are you being smart with me? If you're being smart with me, young lady, you're going to be punished. Punished for being smart? Do you remember the first time when you thought about playing the part? You know, I just thought Mrs. Wormwood was probably the one I might get cast in if I knew yeah. the director. Is it um, weird that you, your name is Zinnia? It is weird. Right. Because it's a flower, right? Yes. It's a delicate Isn't it? Flower. It's, it's a, a delicate flower. flower. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's a little delicate. Yeah, a little delicate in the, <laughs> in the, in the brain. Yeah. Well, yeah. Miss Snit. A girl does not get anywhere by acting intelligent. I mean, take a look at you and me. You chose books. I chose looks. I have a nice house, a wonderful husband, and you are slaving away teaching snot-nosed children their ABCs. We got really lucky finding Mara. When she walked in, boy. <sighs> Man. It was pretty instant, I yeah, think. Yeah, I remember you telling me how much yeah, yeah. she walked in the door. Yeah, after after you see that many people also, it's a, it's a comparative. It's like even when you have an open call and people people come, you can you sort of you can spot them, you know? So after seeing hundreds and hundreds of kids, somebody like Mara walks in, and there is that moment where you think you have the perspective, having seen that many people, that this is it. Yeah. And that's when you call up the director and you say, I think there may be something here. Yeah, and it, it was, it was true. She was so right. OK, watch out. The FBI just showed up. Hey. Get over there and take a picture with everybody. Come on. That car you sold, that's a transmission for lot What can I say? Daddy, you're a crook. My big first memory was you and your mom, and we were at Art's Deli. It was when I, I asked you to do the part, and you guys were interested in doing it. Yeah. Remember that time? Yeah, we, well, I knew that we always wanted to do it. I loved the book so much. So this was a part that I really wanted to play. And I remember we were so thrilled when we got the script. So I didn't have to work so hard, but I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> When I think about the movie on its own, one of the messages there is you can make your own family. And it's funny because I did sort of feel like on the set of Matilda, we were very familial. You know, I did feel like Danny and Rio were like my aunt and uncle, you know. Mm -hmm. Kiami calls me your sister sometimes. If it feels like that, and I think that's a really important message. I think it's one of many important messages in the movie. I wanted to say with Miss Honey. Well, Miss Honey doesn't want you. Why would she want some snotty, disobedient kid? Because she's a spectacularly wonderful child and I love her. What I wanted to do right now is one scene, oh. not moving. We don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> there are a few favorite scenes we have in the movie. And one of them is the first time she realizes that Matilda is gifted. We've been working on our two times tables. Would anyone like to demonstrate? <gasps> so who knows the answer to two times two? Oh. Four. four. Oh, good job. Four times four. Sixteen. 16. 16 times 2. 32. 32. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. One day you'll be able to multiply 13 times 379. 4,927. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda, you know how to multiply big numbers? Wow. 
What was it like growing up as a lavender? Oh man, it's one of the best experiences of my life, honestly and truly. And of course, you know, we had so much fun and I love watching it pretty much every time it comes on and I remember and it brings back amazing feelings, so. Because she was so young and the, when the movie came out, mm -hmm. did, did a lot of people recognize you as Lavender? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll be walking and people say, you know, you look like that girl from Matilda. And I'm like, oh, hey, that's me. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, we yeah. had a great time. We did. I loved working with you. Aww, it was really a lot of likewise. fun. Likewise. David Newman did the music for the movie. That's right. OK, Lindsay Klingman and Michael Hoffaker, who edited our movie. They came an hour late, but they're here. Come on in. Those scenes out in the yard, it was hot out there in front of the Cruncham Hall. All the kids scrambling, running around. The one most scary, most this, most that, images that you saw, nine times out of 10, the riding crop <gasps> and the belt buckle. Oh, good. Because I mean, yeah. you whack it, baby. Whack. Julius Rotwinkle ate two M&Ms during her lesson. And she caught him? Of course. His number one question. Yes. Is, no, go ahead, go the ahead. number one question I always get is, was she that scary in oh, real life? Yes, yes. That's what they're I know. Always and was I? Wow. Yeah. Was, oh. I really, was I? Of course not. Was I not? Oh, <laughs> no, that's what I always say. She was so fine. Oh, yes, I know. And I, I give him money yeah. later. Yes. Just saying. There's that. an extra 20 for that. <laughs> you yeah. know, fresh meat? My favorite yes. line. Yes. Fresh. fresh meat. Meat. Amanda Thrip. Yes, Miss Trunchbull. What are those things hanging down by your ears? What's what? Well, they're actually earrings, but they could be pigtails. You mean my pigtails? Yes, I mean you. Are you a pig, Amanda? No, Miss Trunchbull. Why are you wearing pigtails? My mommy thinks they're sweet. Your mommy is a twit. I want those cut off before tomorrow, or I shall come but round. I don't. Did you say but? I shall have to steal your earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you but. <laughs> <laughs> High school. Was that your real hair? Yeah, um, yes. except for like one part of it, like the flipping part didn't have extensions. But it was all mostly my hair. There wasn't like a wig or something. Okay. So, so what were you in a harness? Like I had, there was a body cast that they put me in at one point. Yeah. Um, and then I was in a harness when I was hooked up to the crane. And then when I was oh going on. <laughs> yes, you like your poor parents. I, were you scared? I loved it. Yeah. I was I was nine years old yeah. and I got to fly. Yeah. I don't know any other nine year old that got to fly. I remember though the way we actually had I think Danny go over the pointy fence on the rig as well to prove to her that he was willing to be impaled just like she would be. I think they were they got they rubber, were rubber ones. at the yeah. time. Yeah. We had this lovely man named Danny Andreco who is the world's greatest sculptor of greens and gardening and he built the flower bed that Amanda Thrift oh, landed in nice. and we buried a movable sled underneath right. the garden and so Saturday. when she sat in it we could move along and she could collect the flowers but he had it arranged so he could do take two and have more flowers yes, ready yes, to go yes. and go wow. but that sequence but it works was great. It yeah it worked great. out great yeah. Do you remember how we attached to the bottom of the table? 
Yes, I remember the way that we did the bottom of the table scene was I had a body cast. Uh, I had a body cast made from like my thigh to about my chest. And then we uh, put it on underneath a size up in the dress, I think. We, we went a size up in my dress and we put it on underneath it and then they put wire hooks and wire in it and then we, we stood the table up and then we wired me in. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun to film. <laughs> The dancing scene, do you remember the dancing scene we were supposed to? I was so nervous about dancing because I'm a terrible dancer. And so uh, I went to Danny and I said, you know, I'm a little nervous about this. And he said, okay, well the rule is that day that everybody has to dance. And so everybody on the set danced and you know, my mom was dancing and Danny was dancing and everybody there was dancing as best they could. Being involved in a movie, which is one of the things that you said before that you felt invested in it and also you felt that uh, you were involved in the creation of the, yeah, definitely. the character, and everybody here was. One day, Jane Rump, the customer, and you talked about the doll that you Yes, yeah, yes. Was... You said, OK, do you think that Matilda might have a doll that she made out of things that she'd found around the house? And I thought, yeah, OK. And so I went home. And I did this drawing. And I actually have the drawing right here because Jane, <laughs> who worked in costumes, saved it. So let's see what it says. She it wears wears Wormwood's makeup. makeup. And she was wearing a little skirt. Yeah. And she had one leg that was made out of jeans and one leg that where she had a little sock. And I remember doing the little sewing, <laughs> sewing a little lace on the sock, little sequin shoes. And I, I named her Wanda Zinnia Wild. Wanda, Wanda Zinnia, Zinnia Wild. Zinnia, I figured, I figured, you know, there Matilda was, you know, she, she, she didn't have a good relationship with her mother. And this was actually maybe, maybe a, like a, almost a backhanded way <laughs> of getting back at her. This character of Miss Honey is uh, so beloved by so many people. Yeah, do you remember when I, I just, I'm thinking about when I met you. Oh, do you remember when I came in and met you? And yeah. I thought of her as having allergies, oh, and I had a, a napkin in here, and I had glasses. Yeah. And I just, I just, I loved her so much. I felt her vulnerability. And Danny, I remember you wiping your eyes as I was doing the reading. You were like, you were like, and I knew you. You got me, I got you right away. Anyway, so that was my back then, and my now is, I now watch it through the eyes of my children. Because my kids see this idealized, beautiful, perfect, fawn of a thing that I just loved so much. One of the characters that everybody asks me about, wherever I am, all over the world, you're one of the first people they bring up because you're you know, you're the caregiver in the movie. It's that's like right, really it's her relationship with Matilda. It's the idea that there's the that's the light at the end of the tunnel and that they find each other and it's so perfect. The last time we saw you, this was it, right. And he was very, very heavy. And the first time I saw him since then, I looked at him, I said, My God, he's he's svelte, man. He lost all of his weight. What do you, did you do something to, what was the story? Well, I stopped eating cake, so let's just all you kids out there. Don't eat too much cake. Bruce Bugtrotter. <gasps> Follow me, Bruce, little Brucey. Now, Brucey, I hear you like cake. Any particular kind of cake? No. I'm thinking of a particular kind of cake that belonged to me. Do you remember that cake? Well, it's hard for me to remember a specific cake. Will this refresh your memory? This is a very particularly delicious kind of cake because it was my cake. You slithered like a serpent into the school kitchen and ate my personal snack. No. You see this? This is a particularly delicious cake, particularly disruptious cake, and I want you to eat it. 
And what do you think of that, Brucey? It's actually quite good. Oh, quite good. Oh, I thought it was more than quite good. I thought it was delicious. Well, my mom's is better. <sighs> How can you be sure unless you eat all of it? You must have some more. <laughs> Cookie! Oh, well done, Cookie. <laughs> now, eat it! Eat it! <laughs> well uh, very good. You, it's a whole other story. This is little Matilda. This is like, yeah. let's do, do, what do you want a book for? What do you want a book for? To read. To, to read. read. <laughs> <laughs> what would you want to read when you get the television set right next to you? That's what I told my kids when I was teaching. You did? <laughs> yeah. Being in Matilda really, once I finally told them, kind of pushed them, oh, you were in Matilda, I want to read. I want to read the book. It was a good motivator for them. I love my kiddos. Yeah. Hi, That's kiddos. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Agatha, this is madness. Give my little bumblebee her house and her money. Then get out of town. If you don't, I will get you. I will get you like you got me. That is a promise. <laughs> so intense. Like intense. Yeah, that was intense. Yeah. That's it. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. Okay. Good. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. And I'll be one over here. Nice. Open them up. Okay. Great. The camera crew and everybody else thanks you for being such incredible troopers. And uh, and uh, th thank you all. Thanks for coming. It was really cool working with you and uh, Mara and everybody in the movie and Pam Ferris. It was truly fun. It was a lot of fun. Like I always say Cheers is like a camp, but this was like camp too. I don't think anyone didn't have a good a time. Blast yeah. On the right movie. all the way up to today, which is everybody's really having a good time today. So we'll have to get together yeah. again, see the movie again someday. Yeah.